LEDs are so efficient. There is a reason that screens are made from them. But what if LEDs could also be lasers? Could we take one of the cheapest and most efficient ways of making light and use it to produce something as sophisticated as a laser? Scientists have reportedly achieved this, but how is this possible? Why is it so difficult? And will it actually lead to new, better lasers? Let's discuss it. Lasers are a vital technology that you indirectly use every day, or at least they're being used on you. They are all around us. They make concerts look awesome. They entertain cats, and hopefully they are not being directed at planes. But there are many ways that lasers are used that you don't see. Lasers are used in communication for high-speed secure data transfer, and they're even being developed in some pretty nasty weapons. While invisible lasers help us to measure distances and are used in speed cameras and have many more technological applications. With all of these uses of lasers, we still don't have a great way to make them. This is because to make a laser laze, we need another light source, which can make lasers large and expensive. Well, at least for good lasers, we do know how to make cheap crap lasers. If you were going to go into any experimental physics lab in any university, you would come across a heap of lasers, but they are different from the lasers you are familiar with. Most people know laser pointers. They are cheap and bright. The lasers I'm used to are much more expensive, much brighter, and much more dangerous. I've definitely burnt myself more than a few times aligning the lasers, and I may have started a small fire once. But they are important in fundamental research. They are a necessary tool that is required for a lot of research. But some lasers cost over $100,000. And not just a little over, a lot over. But what makes some of these lasers so expensive? And why are they so damn big? To understand this, we need to look at how lasers laze to begin with. Lasers work from two main components. They need a cavity, and they need stimulated emission. Remember, a laser is just an acronym that stands for Light Amplification of Stimulated Emission of Radiation. Laser light is different from regular light because it has a narrow emission wavelength. That is, it only has one color, and it is coherent, meaning that all of the light is oscillating in phase with each other. To produce such a clean light source, we need to use a cavity that acts as a spectral filter and an amplifier. A laser works by sending light into a cavity that has a gain medium inside it. The gain medium is important because it has electrons that will absorb light and then emit light at the wavelength that we want. On top of this, the cavity has two mirrors that have a distance that matches the target wavelength so that the light bounces back and forth and will constructively interfere. As the light bounces back and forth, it excites more electrons, which then emit more light which leads to a cascade of emission, which is what we call lasing. The trick to getting light out of the cavity is to have one of the mirrors transmit a little light. And there's a whole suite of ways you can do this. But in the end, what is so special about this latest research? It might have something to do with building the brightest LED that's ever been made. High quality lasers are expensive and large because they require other light sources to laze. This sometimes means using another laser called a seed laser to start the lasing of a better laser. To start the laser, you need a significant amount of light going into the cavity, which is why seed lasers are used. You need an intense light source and LEDs are just not intense enough for this task. To overcome this restriction, researchers have made an ultra bright LED that could produce enough light to start lasing in the laser cavity. But why is this important? We already have ways to build these lasers that don't use LEDs. It comes down to power consumption. LEDs are very efficient light sources, but they are often not bright enough to start lasing. By increasing the LED power, the scientists were able to demonstrate that they could indeed power a laser purely from the LED. So does this mean that all our lasers will now be made from LEDs? No, not at all. This is preliminary work and is far from a general adoption in the industry, but it does give us another way to make a laser, which might be cheaper, more compact, and more energy efficient. 
I should also say there are fairly common forms of lasers called laser diodes, which similarly convert electrical power into optical power. These are very useful and are often used to see lasers, but they are not very good lasers for various reasons. The promise of this LED approach is the potential for making better lasers than the laser diode approach. Lasers might sound complicated, but they are easy to understand when you break them down into each component. This is true of any topic, and one way to learn a wealth of topics is by using the sponsor of this video, Brilliant. Brilliant is an interactive online platform that makes learning easy. You can take different courses on Brilliant, such as scientific thinking, and learn from various different skill levels, including from zero knowledge. Interactive learning is important. It helps you to retain information and it also makes the experience more enjoyable. You can get started for free for 30 days and the first 200 people to sign up using the link brilliant.org slash science discussed will get a further 20% off. Making new types of lasers is exciting, but something even more exciting is reinventing cameras to work more like the human eye. I recently visited researchers that were doing just this, which you can check out here.